Hello, welcome to today's video with Trebuchet. If you have a little furry friend at home or a pet, maybe your friend has a pet and you are wanting to create an SVG of their little animal family member, let's get to it. First thing you're going to want to do is download whichever picture that you are wanting of that little one. I took three different pictures because I wasn't too sure which one would turn out the best. So I'm going to go ahead and record my screen. So the next thing you're gonna do, I have shown this before, and then by the way, this is all free online converter tools or even. So the first thing you're gonna do is go to remove.bg. And once you get there, you're going to select upload image and then select on the one you're wanting to do. So we're gonna go with this one first, but I just made sure to crop out as much of the background as I could and then just leave around the pup. Now, this is the original photo and it changed it to here. And you can see a little bit of the blanket sticking out. So if you hit edit and up here, there is the erase button. You can zoom in a little bit here and with the little bars, move it up. And then I'm just going to remove the little bit of the blanket here that's sticking out. And I'm showing you this because on all three of the ones with the pup, I guess it's a little bit trickier for them to, I'm just gonna undo and fix out of it. With the dog, I think it's a little bit harder for it to recognize opposed to humans when I do the converter or things like that. So I think I cut a little bit of the face there. Let me fix that. There we go. Okay, so we'll go ahead and download that one. So the first step is removing that background. And for this one, I have decided to do two different, I guess, photos just so you can really see the difference because sometimes like the first one I did just did not turn out as good as I wanted, but the other ones turned out great. So this is the next one we're going to be doing. This is the original, and then this is the removed background. This one's pretty good. There's just one part that I want to make sure I can go in and erase. So select that little erase tool, and then again, that little bit sticking out from the background of the photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and select download again and download image. The next place we're going is to pick svg.com, another free SVG converter. I love using this one. There are some other ones as well, but this one is my tried and true. So you're gonna go ahead and select upload a picture and go ahead and select on the one with the removed background. So give it a moment and you're gonna scroll down. Now the first one here, I don't necessarily love, but if you hit on this button here, it might say something different for you. It might say like ready for, you know, whatever, but go ahead and actually I really like that one. So this one looks really good, but just go ahead and try the different ones. Some of them aren't as good. It kind of depends, like for humans, these ready ones are really great, but I guess for animals, this one works better to get their little features in, but so far I think inverted four was the best. So I'm gonna go ahead and select, oh, sorry, select that download SVG right here. And then we're going to go back up and upload a picture and just get that second one in there and see what it can come up with. Now, some of them, like I said, just did not come out that great. I apologize if you can hear the train in the background, but with these ones, I was able to really get a nice look. So we're going to go, I think it was number four, yeah. Invert 4 has been working really great so far with this little pup, and I have not tried another one yet, but we're gonna go ahead and download that. We got the little Frenchie ears in there, so cute. Awesome, so the next step is to hop on over to Cricut Design Space. So the first thing you want to do is start a new project. We're going to go to Upload, Upload Image, Browse, and then in your Downloads folder, you should see, I mean, it guess depends what computer you're using, a Mac, a Windows, or what, for me, I'm just using a Windows laptop and you'll see it looks kind of like a swirl. It doesn't actually show the SVG, what it looks like in the preview window, but I just know that it's my two most recent downloads for me. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. I'm also going to title it and then I'm gonna go back in and grab the other one just so we can really compare the two. I think that'll be a nice little comparison to do, okay. Awesome, I'm so impressed. So select the ones you're wanting to import and add to Canvas. It might make them very large. Oh, perfect. If it is large, just go ahead and adjust the size either up here, or if you zoom in and out here, you are able to access these little arrows and do that. Okay, so 
Um, let me just zoom in a little bit so we can really compare the two and see which one we like the best. I wanted to show you something. So right now in my layers panel, I have all of these little random bits and it kind of just goes on. So what I'm going to do is highlight over this one, all of it, and hit weld. This is just going to take a moment because there are a lot of pieces here, but this is going to make it so that my Cricut is going to cut this all out together. Now, this will be a little bit trickier to weed, so I will show you the techniques I will be using to weed this out. And then this is my other one, which we're also going to do the same thing. We're going to select weld. If you want to clean it up a bit and remove some parts, you can absolutely go ahead and do that. I might actually go ahead and remove some little parts here, but I can always go in with the contour function and do that as well. So a couple of ways you can do it. You could have before you weld it, go in, I'll, I'll undo and just show you. Select the little parts here and ungroup. Sorry, I'm gonna select ungroup. And then before you weld, you can go ahead and select all these little parts if you don't want them in and just exit them. You can also access them in the layers panel here, which is awesome. I'm going to weld it together. But like I mentioned, you can select parts that you want to remove or kind of edit out before you weld, or you can also go into your contour little feature here once it's all welded together and just select the parts you want to remove. If you do want to learn in a separate video how to do the contour because I'm trying to keep this as short and sweet as possible, then feel free to check out this video here where I explain contour a little bit better. There we go, we have both of our layers here. So now when I go to make it, it's going to cut it out. So I just wanna make sure it's the proper size and we're going to select. Definitely decided to make a frame like this so that I could really capture the whole SVG really nicely. So here I have a little square that I made after measuring it out. And I just made sure that I sized it to what I wanted it to look like on the frame. I also typed out her name in just a really pretty font. And if you want to know the font, it is the Belladonia font that I got off of thefont.com, I believe. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and just hide that little square and go to make it. I'm just gonna cut out the name first really quickly, and then I'm gonna come back and show you me cutting this one out because we're gonna do a little bit different. So for the name, I'm just going to select the okay? name, and let's get started with the first color. So we're gonna go in just the white first. And let's put it right here. I'm going ahead with just some vinyl scraps that I have. And I'm ready to load my Cricut machine, so let's do that. I'm just gonna fast forward and skip through the cutting part because it's a little bit loud. Awesome, so that's done. And now for the one that's probably gonna take a little bit. So when you take away or when you want to take off your things, you flip it upside down and you peel the mat away. Gravity helps you to not have it fold and bend and it's just a lot easier. Now we are ready to go ahead and cut out the next one. I'm just going to make sure it's on there really good. I do not want this to move mid-cut and then I have to go in and recut this out. This is going to take a little bit to cut out. What I want to do is... Oh, sorry, I'm not going to edit. I want to go up here to my material. So go ahead and load your Cricut and I will fast forward this part. Here I have my decal that is cut out on my Cricut and I already started weeding the background a little bit. I was filming a TikTok. So a couple ways that you could do this. One, you could weed this way, the traditional, I would say, way where you go ahead and you just start pulling the parts that you do not want out. I like to stick it down on my Cricut mat when I'm weeding because it's almost like having an extra pair of hands that just really holds down your decal so it's not sliding around. And you could go ahead and do this. So really slow and if any part comes up that you want to keep, you could just use your weeding tool to put it back down. Now another way you could do this is the reverse weeding method where you would put down your transfer tape and then pull the whole decal up with all of the pieces that you do not want as well on there and then you weed directly on the transfer tape before you do the transfer so that's another method both are great the reverse weeding one works really great for small intricate designs kind of like this but i also just feel like when it's this way i can really see what the decal is 
but again you do whatever you prefer now that i have this decal weeded out remember slow and steady is the way to go because you have so many little tiny parts i'm ready to do my transfer so take whichever transfer tape you have cricut brand anything works i'm just using the duck brand easy liner that i bought off of amazon i've talked about it in many videos and I'm just going to go ahead and add that clear transfer sheet and with my little scraper put it over top I like to pick it up and flip it upside down so I can peel away the backing that way all of my vinyl ends up on there It's just a lot easier than trying to peel up the transfer tape from the backing now I'm just going to go ahead and line it up to where I like it I like to play around with it a little bit, but thankfully this frame was two pane glass if that makes sense whereas if you were doing a frame that has just the one layer of glass you might want to mirror your image and then put your decal on the opposite side of the glass that's facing out so it's not on the very front part of the glass you're going to put it on the back it just makes it look a lot nicer and cleaner especially if you're going to be selling something like this but for this specific frame i was using i picked it up at my local dollar tree and it actually has the two panes of glass I guess you would say and it's really great I highly recommend it I believe it's a 4x4 frame and it's super cute so I'm just going ahead and transferring this decal again with my scraper and now I'm going to be going in and just adding the name so I wasn't too sure how I wanted to position the name I tried it a couple of different ways and I really like that my transfer tape that I use is very clear sometimes you can find some transfer tape or contact paper that is kind of opaque and it has this, I don't know, like beige tinge to it. And it can be harder to see through. So I like when I can see fully through. It's also really great. Like this one here is a scrap piece of my Cricut brand one. And this one has the grid on it, which is also very helpful to line it up. I know I see a lot of people knocking the Cricut brand one and honestly lately I've actually been really enjoying it. I will say it is super sticky so if you are using Cricut brand transfer tape you can still use it. It is amazing. Just make sure that you stick it down let's say on your pants first or sometimes I've seen people saying they stick it down on their mat. Just something to make it a little less sticky and then it should be good to go. The issue with it being super sticky is your decal does not want to release from it. So that's why a lot of people knock the Cricut brand one. But I promise you it's actually really good. It's super sturdy. So for larger decals, it's amazing. Highly recommend it for those larger decals or those cups and things like that that are circular and kind of tricky if you're doing a full wrap. So the next thing I want to do is create kind of that acrylic paint layer at the back. So let's just pop this one out for this specific frame. There are two different layers of glass. So let's make sure it's on the correct layer. Let's move this over for a moment. I'm going to lay this down just to protect my decal. Awesome. Let's move it a little bit off of the thing. There we go. I'm going to go in with some black and white acrylic paint and make a kind of gray. That's the goal at least. We'll see. Her puppy is gray, so I kind of wanted to get the, the background to be like that and then the outline of the puppy to be black. We'll see if I can try to recreate that nice gray. And what we're doing is just kind of doing it across like this. I don't want it to be the full thing. I just want it to be like kind of like this, if that makes sense. Layer it a bit. Now, yes, I could have done this before I put the decal down, but I really just wanted to see where the decal was. I wasn't too sure really where I was going with this project yet either. So I'm going to let that dry and then we're going to come back after it's dry and take a look at what it looks like. This is the finished product. It turned out so cute. I'm really glad I went in with the acrylic in the background because it really just made this decal and this cute little pup stand out even more. Of course, my friend was so excited and absolutely loved this. It was just a super fun project and I know a lot of you have your own little puppy family members or maybe you have a kitten or you know whatever little animal in your life that you would like to make something for and have it up in your home. Maybe you want to start selling things like this 
I started posting these things on Facebook Marketplace this week and about 15 minutes after I posted it, I was already getting messages for orders. And some of those were to do with the keychains that you can see in the ending here, but I just wanted to let you know that people love their pets. So that's a great niche to get into if you're not too sure could be a fun one. Try it out and see what you think. Thank you so much for popping by this video today and I will see you all in the next one. Happy crafting. Bye for now.